Next part. Okay. All yours. Um, this time we want to uh, broadcast messages, um, which means basically we want to consume them in multiple places in our Quarkus, um, because that's currently not possible. So uh, let's have a look at it and uh, why we need that, why it's fun to have that. So this would mean so right now this would can just be some some rest call, right? It's one call you get, but now what you want to do is you want to have multiple parts where you get the same message from. Um, is that what I understand no, correctly? It's not a rest call. It's yeah, an, I know similar uh, okay. to it. You, someone is just calling you with with the temperature and the humidity, right? Yeah, somebody is so. putting that into the queue and then we get it here. Okay, so um, that's basically just the rest part. It, but okay, so yeah. now what you want to have is... Now want we to want to use... So we publish here the weather data mm -hmm. parsed. And we might have multiple places in our application where we need this weather data, the parsed weather ah, data. Ah, okay, nice. Um, and if we would, for example, this logging here, let's move this to another method just for demonstration purpose. Mm -hmm. Log uh, weather data. And uh, yeah, add incoming weather. If we start this, Quarkus will complain. Hmm, okay. Because <clears throat> by default, you have a one-to-one -one connection so you define a connector and you uh you can publish to it uh, or re receive from it okay um, <clears throat> but only once so now here we get um an error and we have too many downstream candidates exception okay so um we have a publisher the, here but we have this downstream so the receiver mm -hmm. and we and also the have one. the one in the <clears throat> heated yeah. processor but um, yeah, we might not only want to process heat index, we also want to lock it or write it to a database or whatever, do whatever with it. So to make this work, um, we can add to the publisher. So where we create the message, we can add the add broadcast annotation. Mm -hmm. And this basically fixes it. <clears throat> so, <th> <laughs> as okay. always, you fix this just one annotation away. <laughs> nice. Um, but this is only possible inside your program, right? Uh, yeah. You, so, this is the earliest point you can split it up. You can't... Uh, no, you can also consume from multiple... Um, you can have multiple consumers running and listening to the same queue topic. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's also possible. Okay. Um, but inside my application, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, just to tell Quarkus that uh, it needs to prepare that this message is consumed in multiple places. Okay. And uh, if we now test this again, we send this message. And we see here, we received the raw message. We, rec we say we re received the measurement. Um, is this one here, the new method, and we also calculate the heat index. Okay. So we can make our very own weather data logger. And again, we need a logger. Okay, and this will also now work the same because we can just move this around. Uh, it's just another method for Quarkus, uh, so no difference if it's in one class or the other. And when we now publish the data to this, um, we see that one is from the well, data logger and the other one is from the heat index logger. What we can also do, the same applies for example here for the heat index. We publish it here to the heat index topic, or not, not topic, to the connector. Mm -hmm. And then we consume it <clears> in the <throat> heat index uh, 
logger here. So if I would now also want to publish the heat index to a topic on the cube, mm -hmm. then we can make an outgoing topic. Uh, let's call it uh, heat index topic. And here weather heat index. Um, so now we have our uh, outgoing heat index topic. And this is the same name that we have here. Okay. okay. So this will connect to the connector we define here in the application properties, mm -hmm. but also to this incoming. So the one in the application properties is also nothing else, nothing different than just uh, basically another add incoming, mm -hmm. another one listening to this. And then instead of doing something we define, it's sending the messages to the, to the queue. And again, we have the same issue here. If we just start this, um, it complains that um, we do not broadcast, but we have multiple consumers. Too many downstream candidates exception. We have the calculate heat index. Um, ah, we process the processing method. Mm -hmm. Is the calculate heat index method um, where we weather is incoming and heat index is going out. And it supports only a single downstream consumer, but two were found. We have log heat index and we have uh, the channel, the outgoing connector, the channel heat index. Heat index okay. So again, what we can do, we just add and broadcast here. We can start this up again. This will fix uh, the arrow. And we can then see that we, so here on the left side, we have subscribed to everything under weather. So when I publish this here, then I get, let's change the values. So first I get the message that mm -hmm. we send to weather. And then from weather heat index, I get um, the heat index that was calculated. And if we uh, go to here, heat index, and only subscribe to this topic and send it again, then we only get like the heat index. And so you could now have a listener on some other server um, that is just listening to the heat index values coming in here. Ah, oh, nice. So that's, that's the fun about this. Um, so you can use it inside multiple times, but you can also publish it to the outside world and the next service can consume this again. Um, yeah, to use it in other places. Very cool. Yeah. So again, just as a very short summary, um, when you uh, publish, let's go here, when you publish, um, a topic somewhere uh, or a connector somewhere and you want to use it in multiple places um, as we have done. So we have incoming in the weather data logger and the heat index processor. Then you have to add the add broadcast annotation here. So Quarkus knows there will be multiple downstream consumers. Very nice. That's already. That's it? Yeah. That, that part. All right. <laughs> I learned a lot today. Again. N not not all of it. Um, but um, if there are some questions from chat or so, then we can have a look at those. Oh, it does not look like it. Not. Then I have uh, one more topic. that we can look into. Who's still there? Everyone is still there. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> right now, nobody's answering, so. Yeah, it is. We are just uh, so astonished how easy it is. Um, okay. Okay. Let's continue with um, with MQTT. 
Nice. Um, this time we will um, filter messages. So uh, sometimes you get some messages, but you don't want to process them if some condition happens. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we implemented our heat index calculation. But as I told you, this formula only applies over 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, below that value, um, it's not valid. So mm -hmm. what we can do, we can filter it. And how can we do this? Um, it's pretty straight straightforward. We consume the weather data and we publish it again under a different name. Um, valid for heat index. Very creative naming, but at least readable. And then filter uh, invalid heat index weather data. So in here, we can now um, do our calculation uh, for our condition. For example, we can say weather uh, temperature um, is less than 27 degrees. Then we turn null. Otherwise, just return the weather data. So um, this is just a mechanism of the uh, small reactive messaging you, that you can filter. Um, you can make some crazy conditions here. You can call your database, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, and if you return null, then there is no new message added to this topic here or this ah, okay. Here. Uh, and if you return something, you can also mix it with mapping, but it's usually a good thing to, to filter and map separately mm -hmm. to not get too confused. Um, and now we can consume this here. Um, and if we start this, maybe also add, add some logging. and say, uh, um, for heat index calculation, condition, and, oops. okay, if we start this now, Then we already subscribed, nice. And again, we can enter some values here. Let's say it's uh, 30 degrees. Then we get our new heat index here. Mm -hmm. And if we check here, we received the weather data, we uh, parsed it, and then we calculated the heat index. Okay. So far, so good. Now let's see what happens if we are out of bounds for the heat index. We don't get a heat index here. The topic we listen to, uh, we receive the raw weather data, we parse it, and then the weather is not suitable for the heat index calculation. Oh. And then there's no heat index. And if we want to be super and sure. It stops there, okay. Yeah, it's, it stops here. So nice. otherwise it would go through here and then to our heat index logger. Yeah. And that's how you can easily filter stuff. And the nice thing is if you have some generic, um, this is a very specific condition here now, but if you have a more generic um, condition, for example, you have more weather data and do you want to check that everything is set or so, mm -hmm. um, then you can use this connector again, you can add broadcast here, and broadcast, and then you can have multiple ones again consuming this, like we did before. Yeah, 
that's it how you filter messages nice. very cool so this for me as a swift developer it looks like it's a compact map so it will yeah. basically remove all null objects and just pass on yeah. the object that actually exists yeah or kotlin it would be map not null yeah yeah but this part actually doesn't really exist the map so you don't have to write down map you just have to uh, uh put it inside yeah. the stream and tell them okay this is optional and if it's is it always so if it's if it's optional it will always stop there if it's null right yeah okay so nice basically um if you only have at incoming then mm -hmm. it's basically a for each because you get only called, but then you also return nothing. Like we had in our locker function. Ah, okay, yeah, got it. Th mm -hmm. This year is basically, if you have a list and you do for each, mm -hmm. um, you just can do something, but afterwards it's it's done, this chain ends here. Yeah. Um, and if you have add incoming and add outgoing, then you basically have a map because you get something in and something else can come out. And that's a map. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this mapping function has the additional feature that's basically always a map, not null. Um, okay. And if you return a null value, then it's uh, being filtered. So you can use it as a filtering just with this at incoming and at outgoing. Okay. So, and you can also never have an incoming parameter which is null, right? Uh, not, yeah. It's not, not possible to have an optional coming in. Because, nice, very nice, very cool. Um, I mean, you can have a special value for yourself that you send through, but mm -hmm. for the queue, a null value is a value, a message that is not there. Okay. Uh, and, um, yeah. Yeah, sounds right. Okay. Um, I think that's it for today already. Well, almost an hour. Yeah, come on. <laughs>